In the previous lectures, we studied two classes of mechanisms to transfer motion between two machine elements, namely multibar kinematic linkages and cams. In this lecture, we will study gear trains which are used to transfer rotational motion between two shocks. So the first question that comes in is, how do we transfer rotary motion between two shocks? Now there are multiple ways of doing this. We can do it by using a pair of rolling cylinders as shown on the right hand side here. We can do it using belt drives or chain drives or we can do it also by using gears. Now although there are different possibilities and there are advantages and disadvantages of using these various approaches, the kinematics of motion transfer in all these different possibilities is similar to the kinematics of rolling cylinders. So in this class, we'll start with the kinematics of rolling cylinders and we will keep our focus to gear trains only. The simplest way to transfer rotary motion from one shaft to another is using a pair of rolling cylinders. And the pair of rolling cylinders can be an external set where the contact between the two cylinders are on their external surfaces or there may be an internal set where the contact is between the external surface of one cylinder and the internal surface of another hollow cylinder. Note that if you are using external sets, the direction of rotation of the two shafts will be opposite to each other. Whereas, if you are using internal sets, then the direction of rotation of the two shafts will be the same. Now to achieve motion using rolling cylinders, you need to have sufficient friction at the rolling interface. Otherwise, there will be slippage and you cannot maintain a constant velocity ratio between the input and the output shafts. So the kinematic analysis that we will do for the rolling cylinder in the next slide will assume that the relative velocity at the contact point has to be zero. However, this is a big assumption and practically it is very hard to ensure that this condition will be satisfied. Therefore, we use systems like gears which essentially has the same kinematics as the rolling cylinder, but is much more robust in maintaining a constant angular velocity ratio between the input and the output shaft. Let us first make sure we understand the kinematics of the rolling cylinders. As we will see subsequently, that the kinematics of gears will be the same as kinematics of rolling cylinders. Therefore, in the discussion in this slide, I will be interchangeably using rolling cylinders and gears. Let us assume that the big cylinder here is attached to the input shaft and the smaller cylinder here is attached to the output shaft. Similarly, the hollow bigger cylinder here is attached to the input shaft and the small cylinder here is attached to the output shaft. Now since this input shaft is rotating in the clockwise direction, the contact point on the bigger cylinder tends to move towards the right. So the friction force acts to the left. We will denote this friction force by Fg. Now this friction force has equal and opposite reaction that acts on the smaller gear, which we will denote by Fp. This Fp creates a moment about this center here, and this moment is in the anticlockwise direction. So the smaller cylinder moves in the anticlockwise direction. Therefore, you can see that for an external pair of rolling cylinders, the direction of motion of the two mating cylinders will be opposite to each other. Now for the internal set, the contact point on the bigger gear or the input gear tends to move towards the left because the gear is rotating in the anticlockwise direction. So the force on the bigger cylinder at the contact point due to friction will be in this direction, which will denote by Fg. The reaction force on the smaller cylinder will be towards the left, which will denote by Fp. This force Fp creates a moment about this center, which is in the counterclockwise direction, which makes this smaller gear or smaller cylinder move in the counterclockwise direction. So you can see why for an external set, the shafts move opposite to each other. And for an internal set, the shafts will be rotating in the same direction. Since for external cylinders, or as you will see for external gears, the two shafts will be rotating opposite to each other and the relative velocity at the contact point has to be zero. 
omega out times r out equals to minus omega in times r in. So omega out is the velocity of the output shaft or the output cylinder. R out is the radius of the output cylinder. Omega in is the velocity of the input shaft. R in is the radius of the input cylinder. Now for internal gears, omega out times R out will be omega in times R in because the two shafts are rotating in the same direction. Therefore, the angular velocity ratio mv, which is defined as the output angular velocity by input angular velocity, is plus or minus input cylinder radius by output cylinder radius, or input gear radius by output gear radius. And we can write the same in terms of the diameters. So this is the fundamental formula that you have to remember for this class. And remember, the negative sign is for the external gears and the positive sign is for the internal gears. Now let us look at the torque ratios, which is the ratio of the output to the input torques. Now note that the torque produced by Fg is equal to Fg times Rn. Now this will be opposite to the input torque if this shaft is moving at a constant angular velocity. So tau in will be minus Fg times Rn. The output torque tau out will be produced by this force Fp, which will be Fp times R out. So tau out by tau in becomes minus Fp R out by Fg R in. Now Fp and Fg are same, so they cancel out. And we get tau out by tau in equal to minus r out by r in. Similarly, we can show that for the internal gear set, we get tau out by tau in as plus r out by r in. So the torque ratio, which is the ratio of the output torque to the input torque, is plus minus r out by r in, or plus minus d out by d in. So what you see here is these two expressions are just inverse of each other. So let's try to understand a bit physically what these two expressions imply. You can see that if the input gear or the input cylinder is bigger than the output gear or the output cylinder, that is Rn greater than R out, then this ratio Rn by R out is greater than 1, which implies that the output shaft moves faster than the input shaft. In other words, when you have two mating gears, the smaller gear rotates faster than the bigger gear. In terms of torque transmission, the situation is opposite. If R in is bigger than R out, then this ratio is less than 1. So you will be transmitting less torque to the smaller gear. This also implies that if you have to multiply your torque when you are transferring motion from one shaft to another, you should put the smaller gear on the driving shaft and the bigger gear on the driven shaft. Now remember that this formula for the angular velocity ratio is dependent on the assumption that there is no slip at the contact point. If there is slip, then it is not possible to ensure that the angular velocity ratio will be a constant. As I stated before, because friction is unpredictable, it is hard to ensure that there is no slippage at the contact between two rolling cylinders. The use of mating gears with specially designed tooth profile can ensure that we can follow the desired kinematic behavior of rolling without slip more robustly. Even though the actual contact geometry and the contact dynamics for gears gets more complicated. The figure on the left here shows a standard and widely used gear called the spur gear and the profile of the tooth here is important to ensure that the kinematics of two mating gears is same as that of two rolling cylinders. So let us first look at some terminology related to gears. The key concept is that of the pitch circle. The pitch circle is equivalent to the rolling circle of the cylinders. For two mating gears, the radii of the pitch circles are the radii of the equivalent contacting cylinders with motion identical to the mating gears. The circular pitch is an important quantity, which is the distance between the center of two teeth along the circumference of the pitch circle. 
and it is denoted by pi d by n where n is the number of teeth and d is the diameter of the pitch circle. Another concept that is important is that of the base circle. The base circle is used to design this tooth profile as you will see in the next slide. Now the top face of the gear is called the top land and the bottom face here or here that is called the bottom land. The dimension of the gear teeth along this direction is called the face width. The portion of the geared surface above the pitch circle is called the face and the portion below the pitch circle is called the flank. There are two other circles called the addendum circle and addendum circle which are of importance. The addendum circle is the circle passing through the top of the gear teeth and the addendum circle is the circle passing through this bottom of the gear teeth. The difference of the radii between the pitch circle and the addendum circle is called addendum and the difference of the radii between the pitch circle and the addendum circle is called the addendum. When two gears are mating, there is usually a clearance between the top land of one gear and the bottom land of the other gear. To ensure that the angular velocity ratio is kept constant between two mating gears, the gear tooth contours or the surface profiles on the mating teeth must be conjugates of one another. Now the theory of conjugate surfaces is mathematically quite sophisticated and it is outside the scope of our class here. There are many types of conjugate surfaces that one can use to form the gear tooth profile or the gear tooth contour. However, most gears use the involute curve. There is a mathematical description of this involute curve, but we will give an intuitive description of this curve. Imagine there is a cylinder and there is a string that is tightly wound about this cylinder. The radius of the cylinder is the same as the base circle radius that we saw in the previous slide. It is also known as the evolute in the theory of conjugate surfaces or conjugate curves. Now if we unwrap this string so that the string is always tangent to the cylinder and the center of curvature of any point is the corresponding point of tangency on the circle. Then the curved form is called an involute curve and most of the gear tooth has this involute profile and it can be mathematically shown that if two mating gear teeth have involute profile then their relative motion will be identical to the relative motion of two cylinders with radius equal to the pitch circle radius. Now one of the reasons we did not go into the theory of conjugate surfaces is that we usually do not design these surfaces. Gears are available in standardized formats and we usually choose the gears from the standardized formats. And one of the fundamental aspect that is important when you choose a gear is a circular pitch PC that we had seen before, which we had said was pi d by n. An alternative measure is called the module, which is d by n. And similarly, we can also have the diametral pitch, which is the inverse of the module. Now, gears are listed according to the standard diametral pitch or the standard modules. In the metric system, module is used. In the non-metric system, the diametral pitch is used. Now these definitions of module, circular pitch and diametral pitch is very important and you need to know them. Now let us look at the contact geometry of two mating gears. The picture on the upper left hand side shows two mating gears. The smaller gear is usually called a pinion and the bigger gear is called a gear. Now for two mating gear, the base circle of the pinion and the base circle of the gear are shown here. The pitch circles of the two gears are shown here. This is the pitch circle of the pinion and this is the pitch circle of the gear. The base circle radius is smaller than the pitch circle radius. The gear tooth projects both above and below the pitch circle. And this involute profile only exists beyond the base circle. The addendum of the pinion AP and the addendum of the gear AG is the amount of the tooth that is sticking above the pitch circle. For standard 
full depth matting gears. AP is equal to AG. In this picture, the pinion is attached to the driving shaft and the gear is attached to the driven shaft. At the contact point or the pitch point, the velocity is in the vertically upward direction. The normal at the contact point, which is the axis of transmission, is along this direction. The force from the pinion to the gear acts along the axis of transmission. This force has a component along the common tangent to the two pitch circles, which is the direction of the velocity at the pitch point. This component creates a moment that drives the gear. So the angle between the axis of transmission and the common tangent to the two pitch circles is called the pressure angle phi. Pressure angles for gears are set to a few standardized values, namely 14 and a half degree, 20 degree and 25 degrees with 20 degree being the most common one. Gears that are mated together and run together, they have to be cut from the same nominal pressure angle in order to keep the angular velocity ratio constant. Now for this class, when designing gear trains and selecting gears, we will adopt a convention that the minimum number of teeth in a gear is equal to 14, unless it is otherwise stated that you can use a smaller number of teeth. Now this number is chosen because for the pressure angle of 25 degrees, which is the highest pressure angle that can be, having 14 teeth ensures that there will be no undercutting or the top land of one gear teeth will not interfere with the bottom land of the mating gear. Now note that having a small pressure angle is actually better in terms of force transmission. Now the discussion on gear contact geometry and pressure angle that we just did are summarized in this slide and this slide, so I will not go over them again. With this background on gears, in the next module, we will see how to design gear trains.